Hi, I'm Dee Ramirez. We're here at the home of Icon Collective in downtown LA. Now for this next episode, I'm going to be focusing on synths, top lines, um, basic synth programming, picking the sounds, kind of what sounds are appropriate, um, and then we're going to be using that within our track. Also, as kind of part two of this episode, I'm going to be looking at tidying up everything we've got, naming everything, etc., et before we start arranging. The reason why I haven't done that as we've been going along is because we've been focusing, if you remember from the first episode, on the left brain, right, right brain scenario, which is basically getting all the ideas, all the lines in first. Then we're going to go into organizational mode before we start arranging. Uh, for the purpose of this as well, I didn't want to be sat here, I'm not the best keyboard player in the world, and I didn't want to be sat here kind of getting the riffs right. So we've actually got the keys courtesy of Mr. David Alexander from Icon Collective. He's uh, given me a few little lines to work with. So what we're going to be focusing on is actually just sort of getting the sounds for the actual lines we've already got. So let's get started. Right, we've got our basic groove, which you're familiar with now. Okay. You notice that none of this is actually named or anything, so really we haven't got a clue what it is. I kind of remember from memory. That's what we're going to be working on next. <clears throat> you see down here, this thing called trance lead, if I zoom in on that. Uh, <laughs> don't be fooled, it's not a trance sound and it's not a trance track, but uh, here's the actual synth line itself. If I open up the matrix editor there and zoom in on this, we can see there's our, there's our little line, which has already been done. You can see that we've actually tidied up the note lengths, etc. So all of that's been done. We're not focusing on actually getting the, the lines themselves. We're focusing on working with the sounds. Okay. We've also got down here, we've got a little chord pattern. If I open this up and focus it on this, here's our little chord pattern that we've actually put together. Now these two things re interact quite well. So Let's get started. What we've got here. Let's open up a little synth. Now, this little line here, I'll just press the loop button, is basically a little blippy synth riff. So what we want is something, we want something with character, something that's going to sit above everything else in terms of the frequency, but it's also going to react, interact with the chord. So let's actually start work on the chord part. Now, what I'm going to do is I've actually got an EXS24 opened up already. Within the ES24 I've found a little sound, but this is actually in. If we go to factory, we're in synths, synthesizers, we're going to go synth, Mosh, we'll go sequence elements, and we've got the fat SQ, I think it's somewhere. Fat synth sync SQ, that's right. It's the big SQ, sorry. So factory synths, synthesizers, sequence elements, and it's in here somewhere. Big SQ, okay? Now, the reason why I've picked this noise, well, you'll hear it if I solo it. I'll take these effects off. That's the line. Now, the reason I've picked this sound is because it's quite a choppy little sound, but we can also open up the filter on this, and we can also open up the release, etc., which will help us when we come to the arrangement side. You know, we can make it more choppy, and we can also open the release here. things later on in the track. So we can actually manipulate that sound. Now what we're going to do straight away is I'm actually going to apply a filter after that, after the plugin, which we're just going to use the basic logic auto filter. And we're going to set it so it just acts as a straightforward filter. Now what we'll do with the filter here I'll zoom in on this. We'll turn the fatness up. And what that enables you to do is actually add a little res a bit of resonance without, um, because usually with filters you add resonance and you lose some of the bottom end for some reason. With the fatness turned up, you can actually keep the bottom end in there. I'll actually show you. Yeah, 
end. So you're losing that with fatness, you don't actually lose the bottom end as you take the, take the cut off down. Okay. And we, we want to just leave that set on full cut off for now because that's something else that we're going to be using uh, within the arrangement. Okay, so that's our basic sound there. I'll just close that down. Now, we've actually got a top line and I'm just going to open up this basic sound that I've already got for the top line and solo this top line so you can hear what it is. Now, that's okay. The sound works, it's, uh, it's functional, but we want something a little bit more, with a little bit more character to that. So, but we also need it to interact very much with the chord pattern that we've got. So we've got to be thinking about two things. A, the frequency content uh, and where they sit together. You don't want it to just sound like it's all a mush of sound. What you want to do is actually you know, get a, pick a sound that sort of interacts really well but sits on top of the other chord pattern. So, you know, you can still hear the two working independently but together. So let's right, go into the ES, ES1 here and start work looking at this. Now, the ES1 is an interesting synth. Um, I'll zoom in on that. Let's have a listen to the sound. You can see that there's a mix slider here, and there's a mix between the sub oscillator and the main oscillator. That's actually set at full, just the one oscillator. So now here we've got the different waveforms for the uh, the two waves. The sub, -os sub oscillator one is here uh, and the main wave is there. We've just got it set on 100% main wave. So let's, 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 let's flick around the two, the, the different waveforms there and listen to the different sounds we can get. See there's the extreme square wave with pulse width. a really nice sort of sawtoothy thing so let's leave it there now <clears throat> we can bring in the sub as well let's have a listen to the different waves there let's mix them together so Also on here, we've actually you can see that we've got a little bit of portamento on the sound, which gives it that little whip, 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 whip. It's a little glide between the notes. Maybe that's something we can automate later on. But for now, we're just going to leave a little bit of portamento. Also over here, you can see we've got the ADSR envelope settings. And we've got it set, the decay set fairly short. But again, for automation purposes, we can now let's turn it to mono. We want it fairly blippy and short and choppy, so we'll leave that there like that. Now, some of the interesting things about the ES1 is that you can actually, there's an, there's an extra modulation envelope here, which you can see. And we can assign that, we can assign that to any of these parameters at the side. So if we want a little bit of a pitch at the beginning of the sound, very sharp, you can hear you give it a very sharp pitch decay at the beginning, which is quite interesting. We don't want to mess with the actual pitch of the sound, so. Okay, maybe we can mix in a bit more of the lower. nice. It's 
So we've used the, uh, we've modulated the pitch a little bit with the mod envelope set to a very fast decay. So you know, all you're hearing is a little sort of artifact at the beginning of the sound, which is nice. Okay, next we'll go to the filter. You can see that the filter's on full cutoff at the moment and we've actually got uh, the ADSR here. Oh, that's the key setting. Excuse me, let me... Uh, now there's a little drive setting here, which is quite nice. Give it a little bit more fatness. We'll set it to 24 fat. possibilities there for when we come into our uh, arrangement again. So quite a basic sound. Now what we can also do as well is we can focus in on this section of the ES1 here. Again we've got an, a low frequency oscillator, an LFO, which we can assign to any of these parameters at the side. The same parameters you can assign to this mod envelope. Now if we look go into the pitch uh, let's go to, let's have a look at what we can work with, pulse with. So, what we got here is a basic pulse width modulation setting. Yep, you can see that. Which gives the sound a little bit more movement. Nicer set, quite fast actually. All that is doing is actually modulating the pulse width. I'll show you where the pulse width is. The pulse width is this waveform here. If we look at these two waves, you've got between uh, you've got a, between a sawtooth or a square and a uh, a smaller square wave. What that parameter at the bottom is doing is actually modulating uh, the difference between the two at that speed via the LFO. There we go. Which actually gives it quite a nice wobble, a bit more interest to the sound. You can see again for messing around in the arrangement